Hi there, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. I have been uh, in my hide and stitch mode for the last two weeks, which is um, just something I do when there's lots going on in my life and I'm trying to get my way through it in the midst of everything. So the funny thing is, the last three videos that I did, I had either been on vacation or it was right before vacation and oh my gosh, my energy was high. I was so happy and goofy and the last two weeks it's been like, mm. I have had um, extra responsibilities that I have taken on and um, helping to manage some things for my father with the help of my sister and my brother, but it's doing it at a distance for somebody else and I can't even manage my own life and my own responsibilities. So um, it has been it has been quite something, but that's where I got back working again. I got all this stuff going on and then still finishing up with some things that were very important for my household to get done. And then my sister-in-law came in town and her son came with her, which is awesome. I need to just rent kids um, like once a week. I need to rent a kid for this guy because Riley was totally worn out because he had so much fun. So I'm going to put him down and share with you. Now this video is going to be wool. I am going to do different videos because I've been doing lots of different things. And crazy thing was I started at the beginning of the month. I thought I am going to have so much time to do stitching this month. I'm going to get so much done. And oh my goodness, today's the 26th. The month is almost gone. And I got a lot done, but not exactly what I thought I was going to get done. So this is going to be the Wool Along Friends video. And Lisa from Prims on Greenway and I are hosting hashtag Wool Along Friends. We are really helping to promote um, wool, wool needlework, and really wanting to inspire as many people in our stitching families as we can to either pick it up again, give it a try, just try a different form of needle art because it is just nice. It's needle and thread, just different needle, different threads, different things that you're working with, but it's so fun. And we've had people saying that they're getting addicted to it or they're picking it up again and enjoying it. And that is me. Lisa was working with wool and I was just following her and watching her and I thought, oh my goodness, because where I sit and stitch now, I was able to move my boxes of wool under this table and I would look at them and I would think, oh, I got to get into them, but I was cross stitching. So I kind of stepped back from cross stitching this month because mania, I cross stitched almost every day and it was wonderful, but I've been doing wool, not every single day, but saturated in wool and loving it. And then I'm also with Melanie from Melly Ellie Stitches. I have been not a good host. I got her to co-host um, hashtag just get it done June SAL. And then I kind of backed off and got in my hide and stitch mode. So I need to engage again, but I am not a good hostess. But one thing that I like to do is I like to put it out there. I like to get people inspired. My personality is not good at follow up or follow through. So um, that's me guys. I love lots of things. I get excited about lots of things and I jump into lots of things and then, um, then I get a little dicey afterwards. But I can show you, yes, just get it done. Bingo, I got a lot done with that focus too. And it helped me because I got some quilt stuff and I had gone to a fabric store and I thought, oh, I wanna start this new quilt. And I thought, no, just get it done. And so that has been helping to keep me from getting too many things going. So I have my table laid out I am going to share with you and since today is Saturday, it really helps because my work schedule is, I don't work today. Um, and so that has kind of helped in my mind because I was just, the anxiety was coming and all this and I thought, no, no, I had just been so relaxed and wonderful and I just want to keep, I want to keep myself at a healthy balance. But you know, sometimes there's just stuff that comes up. so. I'm going to, 
I've been gathering this stuff for days because I thought, I don't know when I'm going to have time to do this. So I'm going to share it with you and share with you what I have been doing. So should I show it to you? Should I show it to you? Um, I'm just going to pick stuff up. It's not in the order of what I've done. And then I re realized one of the first things that I got finished, I can't find. It was a darling little radish needle book and it's on Instagram and um, I can't find it, but it's small and I have stuff all over the place. So hopefully I will find it because it is adorable. So this is one thing. Now here's the other crazy thing. So I did a video. I can't remember which one it was. Um, I did a video and um, one of the last ones that I did and I, I had a pitchfork and it was, I was being goofy and I had the pitchfork and I did a pose and um, I was just talking about that pitchfork. And then I went to pick up my Maggie Bonomi books to show why I had that pitchfork and what I was going to make and I couldn't find it. And then I found it and then I made my project, but I went to find it so I can tell you guys which book it's from and now I can't find it again. It's, it's flown away. It's the bird has flown the coop. I'll, I'll put that in my show notes eventually because eventually I have a lot of stuff that I can't find right now. So it either is in a suitcase or I left it up at the cabin. I don't know where it is, but I do know where this is. So this in the book, this pattern was just, um, it was this shape, but it was a little bit larger. I reduced the pattern to 85% of the original size and I turned it into a needle book. So this was supposed to be like a needle keep. And I thought, I don't have room for lots of pillow thingies around, even though I could have hung it on that pitchfork. Um, but I, I love needle books and I have them all over the place. And so this is what we have. So I reduced it and I did, um, I'm loving using my wovens for the background because I, even though I have technically three boxes of wool, it's really amazing when you go to find a certain color, you don't have that one. So. I, I have a lot of wovens and they are, um, they are gorgeous and I love them. And so I am really enjoying using my wovens, um, for the background. So we have that and then look at, there's going to be a surprise in here. Are you guys ready? There we go. So this guy has been in use. So this is a snail. This one is from Thistledown Moon, but it's funny when I did the picture, I centered it and I forgot all about his little eyeball stalks coming out. So I think I'm going to make a little trail or something, but he's off center. Um, but I love, I decided to put this in there because this is what I do all the time. I want a piece of wool on the inside for me to stick my needles in. I thought, why is instead of just a square, let's do something cute. And so I love snails. So, um, we have him inside and then I made a pocket again. This is my wovens. I have a lot of brushed cotton. So, um, just did a pocket and what are these things I always have in there. These are, um, this is wonderful for just regular thread, very thin thread, ultra fine needle threader from Peacemakers, P-I-E-C-E-M-A-K-E-R-S. And then these things, you can see the ones that I use. I use them until they're not sticky anymore, they're dirty, um, and then I throw them away. But I ordered some new ones because this is what they are. I've shared this in the past, but for those new followers that I have that are wondering, what is that? This is what it is. So it's a thimble pad. And um, they're just like suede or leather, whatever it is. Um, it's a wonderful thimble pad. And when I get them, I cut them in half and I tuck one of these in whatever needle case that I have. So I've got these all over the place. I probably have about 10, either these jars that I use. Um, this one is empty because it's in a new thing that I made, but usually I'll have this and some thread in there. These are my applique, wool applique needles. Um, and so those are the things that I love using. So that is one. So just get it done. And this is the thing I get all excited. I get something almost all the way done and then oh, I'm bored with it and I want to go on to something else, but that has really kept me on track. Just get it done June and June is almost over. So I thought, just get it done. So yes, bingo, both wool applique and, um, getting something finished. Now, when you use wool, the tighter and smaller the weave, um, the more it stays together on the edge. The larger the weave, the more that it wants to come loose. So I can trim that. All of this. So, okay. I am also going to share with you about my stitching. So I am using, basically I'm doing it Maggie's way. 
but I am using a different thread that I love and I've shared a little bit about it in the past, but I'm going to tell you exactly what it is um, because it's in another one of my projects, but it's the RFL 80 weight thread is what I'm using. And I like, and then look at, he's got, it looks like he's got little socks on. So he's got little Argyle socks, but that was the stitching that I did. So this is the needle, needle case. I will tell you what book it is when I find it because um, like I said, it could be up at the cabin. So I'll figure it out. I'll put that in there as soon as I see it. Or if anybody knows that book that it's in, please comment and help me out. Okay, so that's one. Ching! Um, just get it done. Done. Now, this, this one, I got a big smile on my face because this one I'm super excited about because this took a lot of brain work. Part of it was I woke up one night at 2 o'clock in the morning because I had had sugar. And um, I fell asleep, boom, and woke up wide awake, 2 o'clock in the morning. I thought, get up and do some stitching. So I did. And I, as I had gone to sleep and as I woke up, I was trying to work out in my head, how am I going to do something? Because are we allowed to do this? I changed something of Maggie's pattern. Maggie, oh man, I love Maggie. She is my favorite wool designer. Um, my favorite wool designer. Um, but I changed something. So this is her needle roll up. Let me tell you, so in case you want to see needlework roll up with these hands. So this is the with these hands book. I changed it up part of it because it needed to change and part of it was because I wanted to. So I got into my mom's antique button jar. So this is antique button. Let me show you. It is like a, a wrap around. Love that. It's kind of weird that it's on the back, but this is just, it's not going to roll up because I used my army blanket and it's a little bit stiff. So I just used, um, I, I have many, many hobbies and many, many things with my hobbies. This is just, it was a waxed Japanese cord that I have with my beading materials, but I wanted something very neutral. You could really use just about anything. I first had a piece of jute on there, so you can use anything, um, even, um, pearl cotton. You can use whatever, but it was just what I had and I was glad. Okay. So Maggie, does not do a lot of blanket stitch. Lisa Bonjean, Primitive Gatherings does. So I'm kind of mixing and melding some things. So I did the blanket stitch around just because I can't get enough stitching. So this is the back and it's done. It's done. Um, that's what I'm so excited about. So this is the back and I did it almost. So if you just look at the pattern, this is almost exactly that pattern. I just added this and then of course that guy. Now it was supposed to, and I have beautiful ribbon from my beading time. It could have been a roll, but because I'm using my um, army blanket, if you know about the stories, I've been talking about the army blanket, um, it is stiffer, but I, I swear, um, the whole, this whole front is all that army blanket in it, except for this, this green piece down there and these guys. So these, these ones are different, but all this army blanket, um, and I, I'm enjoying it. Okay. This is the exciting part. This is what I changed. <gasps> da, 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 da. There we go, guys. There we go. So this is the inside. So technically you were supposed to be able to roll it up, but this pocket is really stiff. So I could, I could have rolled it up and it could have been a roll, but my mind, it, it just, I did it flat. I had to rearrange things because when I did this pocket, because this as the army blanket was really stiff. Um, as I did that pocket, it changed everything. And so it couldn't even fold. I had to, it was supposed to be in the center. So these are some things that I did change. Um, I changed the bird. So this is the bird. Oh, that's the bird from the needle book. Oh, I was like, I already lost it. No, it's over there on the chair. This is the bird from the needle book. Um, and so I did change a few things up. So nice big pocket, but it's a pretty stiff pocket. One thing that I learned, so I wanted to share with you tips. I, at first I had the pocket pinned on there and I was going to applique it all. And I thought this is not working. So I unpinned, I un, cause I didn't read the directions either. I had this pocket separate and then I did all the applique pieces, did everything. Then I um, that was just sitting there, which was good. It was good that I didn't stitch it on because I changed things. But when I did go to stitch it, I did stitch it down with my RFL thread first. Then I went through and I did, this is the feather stitch. This was on another project that I'm going to show you. And I, I just liked it. So this was the feather stitch that I did. I started it here and worked back way. 
backwards. This was this was different. So in in the pocket on the pattern, she has a little loop for the scissors. I opted not to do that because I'm going to use different scissors in here. I'm going to use my I was going to call them zingers. Um, I'm going to use my ginger snips. There we go. Um, because they stay in there nicely. They are sharp. I like them. And I didn't want to worry about losing. I love, um, I love my ginger five inch and four inch, but I didn't want to try to do a loop thing and I didn't want to worry about losing them. This stays in there because it, it's, it's got a little more friction on it. Again, antique buttons from my mom's button collection. This was from a different book, and I'm not sure which. It's a different Maggie book, and I'll put it in there in the show notes. So I added this. This part was there, so it was supposed to have this, this, and this piece. And then I thought, oh, let's do some of that. I was calling this crosshatch. It's not. It's the herringbone stitch, and I've learned that from this. You guys got to get this. Awesome book. I've been using that a lot. Um, herringbone stitch. And another antique button and then the fly the feather stitch around there again so that's it then this this was in there but this was supposed to be a pin cushion it was supposed to be two pieces you stitch the heart you stuffed it and then you put it on there not what I wanted to do because I wanted it flatter so I, I this was one of my two o'clock in the morning things that I came up with as well it's amazing a cup of decaf at two o'clock in the morning and I figured some things out another antique button um, and what I figured out was I have, I have different thicknesses of batting, or in England they call it wadding. Allison, you call it wadding too, I bet. Um, so the batting for quilting, I have a thinner that I I like now, and it's the Quilters Quilters Dream Request is what I use now. But I used to have a lot of Warm and Natural, which is a thicker cotton batting, and I wanted that thickness. So I cut out two. I just I cut out two hearts. Um, the size of the pattern and then I went in and trimmed about an eighth of an inch off the whole way around because what I did was I wanted it smaller so I can feel it ends about there so what I did is I put those two pieces of batting put this guy on top of it did the applique the stitching that I'm doing the whip stitch all the way around it then I went and did that stitch so it's on there but it has a bit of a thickness so as I put a needle in it grabs more than just this piece of wool so I liked it Plus I could also, because these are the applique pins of my choice that I'm using. These are applique pins. I call them wool applique pins, but they're just applique pins. I need to get another box because um, I, I this is my favorite method now. So see, I could even put that in there and it could stay, or as I'm sitting, I could just have it on the, the chair or whatever and stick it. And yeah, it did go through a little bit, but it grabs into something. So it was just something fun that I came up with. Now. This is what took a lot of thinking. This is what I wanted. Now on Pinterest, I adore Pinterest. I have about 30,000 pins that I've been doing Pinterest with and I, I love it for ideas. That's how I got into my garden that I'm looking. I always have butterflies, always. If you guys want butterflies, milkweed plants. Milkweed, milkweed, milkweed. Um, and I have a lot of seeds. So if you guys want some milkweed seeds, um, give me a comment and or send me an email and that way I can get your mailing address and I can just stick some in an envelope milkweed seeds you have monarchs all the time um, they're amazing and I love them so they are very distracting oh and you know so there we go I got distracted so that was from Pinterest so back to Pinterest and I had seen this so I was using this jar this is my wool roving that I had done I did that and I had a bunch of the threads in the jar which was fine but it was just an extra step. So I would have to pick up the thread. I would pick up the thread, I drop it. Well, you know what? Obviously that would have happened too. So I had to pick up the thread, I had to pull it off, and then I had to cut it and put it down. So all those extra steps. But I've seen these on Pinterest and Jan Paddock has a kit that she has with something and it has this. And I thought, I am going to figure out how to do that. Well, I figured out how to do this and so if I'm to take this to take this off, so another antique button, look at that one is all chipped up if you can see it. it. Goes along with my gardening fingers. Okay, so this again is that Japanese waxed cord, but um, there, so when I first did this, I just did an inch. So I cut an inch, the bottom layer is the um, army blanket. 
I cut an inch and I thought I can't just wing it with a circle so I got a quarter I laid my quarter right there and that's this that was exactly the size so um, my quarter use that for a pattern and cut that then it looked kind of plain and so I just did a narrower piece of another piece of wool and there you go there's the herringbone stitch to hold it down then yes I, I think I stitched this one the whole thing down and then the blanket stitch as well I obviously like stitching but it was bowing over because it was too soft and so it was doing this and I didn't like it I want I wanted it I wanted it to stay like that so I thought well what do I do well I had a piece of heavy plastic and I was talking about my husband's with the work that he does he has to it's almost like MacGyver where you have to come up with a lot of solutions so if I can't figure something out a lot of times I'll ask him and so I was like I don't know what to do I I was gonna use a piece of cardboard but no that would bend I was gonna use wood thin wood can break and then I found I had template plastic too thin and then I found a thicker plastic that I had it's about an eighth of an inch thick maybe a sixteenth of an inch thick plastic that was stiff and firm but I thought how am I gonna cut it I have saws I have a band saw but it's like I didn't want to haul that thing out plug it in clean it up and all that so my husband reminded me from my woodworking days I had like tin snips they're like scissors um, that you can do metal with and I used to do that but it hurt uh, back then I was younger and it didn't hurt but I I cut that out I traced it I cut it and it worked but it would have been better so if you're doing this from scratch and you want to use something like that would have been better to put that piece narrower behind this one so it would have been three layers the plastic then the the main piece stitch that down and then you could always have this decorative but I hadn't done that so I put it on the on the other side so of course it's in here now and you're not gonna see it but I can feel that piece of plastic right here I can feel it not a big deal it's there but that's what I had to do to keep it stiff so this kept its form and I'm super happy with how that turned out I just had to do an extra knot on the bottom so this is what I did there should have just been one knot I was too lazy to undo it redo it and that so we got two knots no big deal um, and then I I looped it so I had a loop it was twice the size I folded it in half I figured it's because I do the bracelets I figured out how big of a size it would be for that button to go through and I tied a knot yanked it tight straightened it up and then I went down and trimmed it so it's just sim simply that loop and a knot I was gonna do something fancy with macrame and I thought why would I do that when I can make it super simple so just the knot and it's doubled but I wanted to be able to take these off put these on do different threads according to my needs so that's what I've got but this is nice and stiff and it's even pretty when that's not on there so it, they don't always have to be on there so I am very very pleased with this project both because it's a Maggie and me collaboration um, but enjoying that and then I can put a project in there that I'm working on so say here's an upcoming project okay this is in the works so I can just I don't have to put it in the pocket um, I can simply put it in there and fold it up and then I can take it with me wherever I'm going because I get to go on a girlfriend's week coming up soon um, it looks kind of ratty but that's the thing so I have a girlfriend's week coming up um, with just a couple of my friends oh, I can't wait um, a lot of stitching a lot of quilting um, so I get a, I get a break coming up again soon that is one of my projects but oh I got distracted again thinking about my time with the girls okay so we'll take that out these three threads so Maggie uses uh, JP Coates um, summer khaki and she also uses an ecru I have thinner thread so for my applique and wool applique this is the bomb because it's very very thin I would not do that for sewing but 80 weight is very thin it's magic it's a magic thread and um, it comes on these cherry wood spools the best price hey hey talking to my friends right no barking um excuse me oh husband's walking out it's okay Riley he's going to work it's okay okay so um best price Etsy twisted threads fabric they're based out of Portland Oregon 
Um, great prices, fast service. This is where I've gotten a lot. And then also Fat Quarter Shop, um, they're $6.24 there. So $6 on Etsy, $6.24 on um, Fat Quarter Shop. Just depends on where you're buying from. So if I'm buying stuff already from Fat Quarters, boom, I just pop some of those colors in there. What are the colors? So I did it because I needed to do it without my glass or with my glasses. Okay, this darker one, I thought this is the one that I usually use this color when I usually do applique. This is the neutral that I generally use. But no, this is where the best on wool because I'm doing a lot of dark colors, which I do for applique. That one is number 2372. This one is 2370. And this one is 2314. So these are just the colors. But you can see, look at, I have used a ton of this in just two weeks of stitching. So I'm going to need to get a couple more. Um, but this will do me for now. So that was a long time telling you about this project. But this took... The majority of the time that I was working on it because this was a lot of things. Hey, it's just Kurt. Just Kurt. Go on out. Go on out. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so this took the majority of time. This was, and I kept one. I kept thinking, I'm just going to get back to it later. And I thought, no, just finish it up. Just get it done June. One more done. All right. 26 minutes and I've shown you two things. Well, really, that was a lot of things, though. Then the other one I did, I finally got this done. This is from Folk Art, Folk Art um, Needle Love Book. So I've shared about this one a lot. Um, so this one is finished. It's finished. Fully finished. Fully, fully finished. Um, except I was thinking I may undo the stitching. So I do it where I do the side seam and it got a little... Eh, not the best. I just wanted it done and it's hard because you're jamming you're jamming the stuffing in and holding it with your finger so it doesn't pop out and then stitching it up which is why a lot of people do the slice on the back they stuff it and they patch it. This is just how I want to do mine and I am determined I'm going to learn it and nail it and get it done right. So um, one trick that I found because it is not perfect there is a few lumps and bumps, but darn it, I got a few lumps and bumps too. So it's just my kind of heart. Um, this is great. This is what I use in quilting, but this would be a great tool um, that I use. So I can use the soft edge for this, man, and then I can get that down there. And I trimmed that tip to get that down. I had a very soft, squishy stuffing. Uh-uh, does not work. This is the polyfill. Eventually, I would love to get just cotton, but this this size of a project was huge, and so um, I used a lot of it, but I keep trying to squish it flat. But um, the one thing is, I didn't have enough reds to do something with a contrast. So when it's far away, you can't even see those. So as I collect more and more um, wool, I'll do that, or I'll just put a button on there, because here's another one of my, let me get it really close, I want it to catch the lights coming in now. I do have magic blinds now, but I didn't want to get my light box out. This is a door set button. And I don't know if that's good. Well, you can see my stitching at least. If that button, it that is what, what someone told me is a door set button and it's lovely. It was in my antique box and I thought I had a ton of them. I only have two. One of them is on the radish. Okay, so here's a bummer about using polyester. It works its way through not a fan of that and I will never use polyester batting on a quilt again because it does that with quilts too and I hand do I hand quilt my quilt so never you doing that again but I learned a couple things so this was where I was kind of getting the rhythm of the stitching this one shows a little bit more and this is the brown I don't think I used the green on this one um so blanket stitch um feather stitch but I learned I need to do the sepal first. So on a flower, this would be considered the petals and this is the sepal. So I had done this and I did the petals first and then I did the sepal and as you're stitching stuff down, it shifts a little bit. And so I had to stretch that baby. Um, I should have just used a stem there. And that's actually how the pattern was, which is, it, it just didn't happen. But anyway, if I had done the sepal first and then the petals, it would have worked better. But I made it work and I was going to redo it and I thought, eh, good enough. Good enough. So there it is. So 
I am thrilled that it's done. And again, just get it done June. So I got it done. I love using my mom's antique buttons. Um, it just really, it, they just really look beautiful. And then it's just another tie to my mom. So happy with that because I have almost no Valentine's Day projects finished. So now one more, just get it done June. Um, and so did I show you all the stuff on that? Yeah. Okay. So we're doing great guys. Now the, and then the radish, that one, I don't think I've showed on another video. Maybe I did, but I, I need to find that radish. This one is almost done and I was going to get it done. And then no, I had to get, I had to get my office ready for my sister-in-law to come stay. So she and her son could sleep somewhere. So this I'd shared about before. This one is going to go in a frame and it's going to go up to the cabin. So if you have not seen another past video, this is one. Love it. Um, I'm very pleased with that. I got my frame out because I had shared this old frame that I had had. And I, I had said that I had it. Oh, see, I'm just getting marked up, but I, it can, it can rub out, but here's what I did. Um, it had been sitting in the closet for years. I said I had had it 20 years. No, my husband and I just had our 30 yesterday on the 25th. We just had our 38th wedding anniversary. Um, so I got this, I got this around that time, either right before or right after. So I've had this frame forever. It's been in use in different things. And then it's been hanging in my closet, getting banged around on the white paint. So what I did was I just got a little, I'll just sit here and do this. I just got a little bit of coconut oil on a paper towel. I didn't even want to go and get a rag. I don't know. Just going to do it this way or it's not going to get done. That's just how I do things. Coconut oil on a cloth. And I just put it on that kitchen counter and I just started rubbing it on there. And ooh, it's beautiful. It will lighten up, um, but, and I had to sand some things off, but I really like it. I was tempted to sand it more, but I thought, no, it is gonna be. So I had to sand some of the places where the white paint was and get the, oh, look at there, we'll hide that flabby arm part there. Um, but I love old, old, old stuff. And um, so this is gonna go in that frame now the frame was not as dark before I did that coconut oil. And now, and now, um, it's like, Ooh, um, it is, it's not so much of a pop, but it's good. And it's going to lighten up as the coconut oil fades in, but it's my prim, it's my dark, it's going to the cabin and that's, that's, um, prim up there as well. So that's almost, almost a fully finished. And I can tell you before the 30th, it, it will get in there. Hopefully get in there tonight. So those were my wool projects. This is another, see, where's the other leaf? You guys just saw the other leaf. This is a project coming up. This is, this is one of the pockets. Um, it's just a little pocket case. So that's going to get done soon. But, um, this, I, I probably shared it about before with my Osnaberg. I use that a lot, but what I want to also share is the magic of woven. So this was something left over from another project that I had. Isn't that cool? So, so much character to the wovens to use as backgrounds. Then, oh, okay. So I got an order. Let me show that. And I can't remember if I showed this before, but I'm getting projects ready. This is flannel. Um, and it's going to be the background of some blocks of a quilt that I've got going. I was going to use Osnaberg and then I decided to use this. It's flannel, much, much less expensive than wool. And you can't tell because wool is expensive. I know because I just went and bought some. Um, and wool is expensive. It is great, but I'm not going to use everything for wool. So I'm going to use backgrounds. And what was I working on? Oh, oh, guys, 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 guys. I bet you were saying. I bet you saw this and it's like, Hey, don't forget that. So obviously I like birds. Okay. So this tea dyed muslin, um, and it turned out super cool tea dyed muslin. Um, and this is, was kind of a mistake. I went to iron it cause it was almost dry and I went to iron it and it got, it got the tea darker in that area and then it got the tea on my iron. So I wiped it off and that's fine. Good thing I do primitive stuff, but it marked it up differently. But, oh, I, I liked it. So if I had something white behind it, that would really work out for you guys. Let's try this. 
Um, but this turned out marvelous. Um, if I don't say so myself or if I do say so myself. So this is the other thing that I am enjoying is using um, fabrics and wool together. So this is a project. This is from, this is um, Bird on a Branch Pillow with these hands. So this turned up quick. Um, all again, there we go. This is my army blanket. All that green, there's two pieces. This is just a fabric and the lights doing things that are not perfect. This is fabric. The rest is my army blanket. Now, um, and then I've just got bits and pieces of fabric. So I loved how it turned out. When I went to Primitive Gatherings, I was on the lookout for vintage fabrics and I purchased this there, but everything else, oh, I got this there too. I got these two pieces there and a lot of wool. Um, so three bags full. Um, so I am really enjoying using the linen and let me show you as well. You can see the stitching and that's, that's just all part of it, but it does look very primitive and I am not sure. I'm not going to, I, I've, I'm not really into pillows and I usually just sit them up there rather than have them where a pillow is supposed to be. I'm not going to do this as a pillow. What I really want to do is to have it up where that guy is right there. That will be talked about. I'm going to do a floss tube when I don't know, but I'll talk about, <laughs> I'll talk about that guy. That's where I want to hang this, but I need something around it. And I bought a fat quarter of this fabric. So I think I'm going to do a border with that because I want it to look prim and gorgeous but this again this is a finish but not a fully finished but again just get it done June so some things that I'm gonna do there's some giveaways I, I don't have the brain power to do a giveaway today my next wool along I'm gonna do another wool along friends hopefully within a couple of days because I'll show you what I got finished in June so I'll do my next wool along um, I have a couple giveaways um, one of my viewers, um, oh, 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 and I was going to say Artie, no, Annerie Stitchery. She has a book that she is going to donate for a giveaway. Um, but I'm going to do that on the next one. Cause again, I was just lucky to push record today without putting it off. Then I'm going to share, I'm going to put together a package of stuff because I want to share as I was doing... <laughs> I was going to show you as I was doing that bird on a pillow, I thought, wouldn't it be so fun for someone else to be able to make something fun like this? So I am going to put together a package with tea dyed muslin, some of my army blanket, um, and some bits and pieces of fabric, not probably not wool, um, bits of piece, except for the army blanket, because this is what I do. These are the bits and pieces that I have that I do my thing with. That's how I create my magic with these bits and pieces of fabric. This was the binding for something I just finished. So I thought these are pieces mostly from my mom, but I keep all anything. I keep anything that I can use. So I thought, oh my goodness, if I gave someone some of my wool army blanket and some bits and pieces, they could create something like this um, with pieces. Cause I love when I get scraps. So that's going to be a giveaway on the next one. So Watch out for that next one. It should be coming soon. But that was something that I just thought about. But it would be weeks if I got that all together. It's just not happening right now. Um, because I still have a lot of stuff that I need to get done today. Um, oh, so many things to share. Okay, so as I was stitching, I have a very hard time, even though I stitch all the time, I am really backwards at when I do the blanket stitch, it, it doesn't, I don't, I could never teach it because I couldn't say, oh, you put your needle here, you do this. I always have to like figure it out awkwardly as I go. Then depending on if you're just doing it on a binding, everything's already over there. If I'm doing that on an edge with two pieces, it's just different than if I'm doing that on top of something. Um, so this book, I get this book out and it's crazy. Or if I don't have it with me, like say I'm up at the cabin if I don't have it with me, I just have to figure it out, wing it until I can get it figured out. Because what I do is I get this out and I do what she tells me to do. So this book 
is just awesome because this is how so like this is figuring out how to do the edging so this is um, still available so great resource now I was reading through this I went to the store she has another one too she had another wool and needle one I didn't get it because I was already getting tons of wool so I thought I'm getting the wool I'm not getting a bunch of other stuff she has two books out now when I went in here she was talking about what needle she uses and I did purchase these so embellishing needles so she does something called the couching stitch I am going to learn how to do that and this is what you use you use see it's primitive gatherings um, and that, that store is amazing we were there for hours um, so size uh, oh there's six I was sorry I was getting distracted okay embellishing needles um, that's what she sells so she has those now in her book she does um, all her wool stitching with chenille needles and I thought I've got some chenille needles now she uses a thicker pearl cotton than I do this is a huge needle for me I use a smaller pearl cotton I use size 12 if I'm doing pearl cotton for any of the stitching Lisa Bonjean does almost primarily um, what I have seen the blanket stitch on a lot of her stitching the Maggie Bonanomy totally different way so the R feel so it's like opposite that's why this this was my Maggie week of the first two weeks of June I did wool applique I loved it immersed myself in it it was wonderful and I really I had to find my own groove I didn't do Maggie stitch exactly I'm doing Bonnie stitch and that's what everyone needs to do they need to to follow someone see what they're doing then do it get in your groove do some more and then you find out what you like so these are the needles that I use so these are the peacemakers and I I like peacemakers but it's their embroidery size 5 to 10 assorted this is what I use so I will use this for you can see the different sizes of the eyes that you can use it's there we go that may be doing it better but you can just see the variety so a variety is great and that would that would help you see because then I have also bought just the size 9 embroidery needles so um, that way you can find what you like now oh good thing I get stuff out okay I'm back I threw everything on a chair over there I wanted to share with you an amazing I saw this um, this is probably where I got it the first time primitive gatherings had this isn't that gorgeous this is the this is the this is my choice of, of pearl cotton Valdani um, dyed variegated luscious size 12 small I use size 12 I love it for everything now I had bought this just because it was the perfect pastels for me not brights these are like my primitive pastels but I thought what am I going to use that on well I used it on the inside of this so maybe where you can see it the most is this okay see where it went from the pink to the green and then there's ecru in here too so I used it on I used it across here I used it for all these edges not this at the bottom that was a different one I used it for all of these and you can see see there's blue there's pink green and ecru I think all the colors are there it was just so amazing and so that's where I have all this stuff all over my table all the time but I just thought oh I gotta show my stitching friends I gotta show them how awesome that was so it's a good thing I lay these things out here um, oh and I have these so just to prove don't break don't break don't break okay so just to prove why I do so many bird things that I love birds okay so look at this guy and look at this isn't this gorgeous hey it almost looks like that doesn't okay so um, you're Colorado is close to where my parents um, lived and we used to go shopping there all the time they had is tiny tiny little village uh, or tiny little town it's not a village and um, there was this beautiful I think it was called Hollyhock something it was a neat gift store and these were Christmas ornaments but I've never used them on my Christmas tree I always hang I don't know why there's that dot there but there is um, but isn't he gorgeous so um, this is how I looked at that this eye to see how to do if any of you guys have followed me the folk art or the folk bird needle bookcase 
that's how I figured out how to do my eye because I did it different than Lori had done hers. But that, and then I've got this one also hanging up. So that hangs on my wall by my window. This hangs on another little case on a handle. These are nut hatches. So we have these up in the mountains. No, it's a chickadee. It's a chickadee, sorry. Nut hatches do this. Oh, I know, I've got a nut hatch too. I don't know where I have that. So I took a lot of stuff. These were up in the mountains. And when we went to redo things, I took stuff down. And I don't know where I have my nut hatch. So, okay, let's get going, girl. Um, let's see, show you some stuff. I ordered, wow, should I stop? I'm gonna show you a few things. And then I'm gonna save some more stuff to the next video when I do the giveaway. Um, just because it's getting too long and I don't wanna I don't wanna rush. I'm gonna talk to you about how I've decided that I really do like to pin instead of doing the light steam a seam. And I wanted to go into depth about what I experienced and why I, I like the pinning better. So um, I'll share that on the next upcoming video. I'll share more about the soft, um, something else that I can use. I'll just share about more stuff on that later, but I do want to share some stuff because I want to put some stuff away. So my co-host and wool along buddy, um, Lisa Prims on Greenway sent me a gift and I had a bunch of stuff out and I was going to put it in there right away and I was going to put it in the projects and then I realized I need to start putting things together and cleaning my room up. So I just love looking at this. So this, thank you, Lisa. Um, this is from my Lisa, my bud, and so these, it's wool velvet, and I'm going to show you, I've got it in a pile. There's a Maggie project that is brown velvet, and then she sent me fabric. Um, so this is just like so exciting to play with, so I've had it up just looking at it because it, it looks so pretty. Um, then, um, I'm just going to show this to you and kind of so this is like why I don't like the light steam seam. I did this darling thing. So this is this is going to be this is going to be a giveaway too because Rosa gifted this to me. I made this, so I'm going to give it away on. Um, I guess since I've told you about it, I'll do it on the wool, but really it should be in the quilting. But anyway, I'm going to end up do, give. I'll, I'm going to be giving this away, but not now. But I'm going to end up doing a quilting video. A floss tube video and a wool video so maybe you just want to check into all those um, because I can't guarantee anything I did this so thank you Rosa this I came up with I love the project but I use the light steam -a seam and it gummed up my needle it was stiff I did not like it that snowman there we go you can see that better so this is gonna be a project bag um, so that will be a project bag and that's why, because I already did the pattern, I can share it. But in experiencing the light steam seam and the gumminess, um, not gonna do that on fabric again, I will be using this if I do anything. So we'll talk about that on, on another video. But I did purchase some, um, this is, I think it was from 123 Stitch, but it's velvet and it's Lady Dot Creates and this is mushroom. So for me, primitive, um, it's awesome. I also got some linen that I'm going to do a project with, but it's all put, it's all stacked in my books of what I was going to show you upcoming. So we'll just do that on another Wool Along Friends um, video. But in that, I also wanted to show you, because I want to put this away, I made an order from Kathy Schmitz and I ordered a yard, there we go, of some unbleached linen and it's a thicker one. So this is not thin like Osnaberg, it is not thin like muslin. And, and it's not like canvas. It's just a type of a linen. It's not showing up nicely, but it, it looks primitive. So you can kind of, it's kind of like flax um, cross stitch linen. So this is a backing that I can use um, for my wool projects. Then when I was at um, primitive gatherings, I was, I, I bought because I, <laughs> obviously it was exciting. Um, it was amazing. We were there for hours. And when I shopped there, I told my friend, we walked in the door and I said, all right, Kim, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. We'll just meet as we go because I cannot talk and be a friend and shop at a marvelous place at the same time. And she did the same thing. That's why we're friends. Um, so it was wonderful. But while I was there, 
I, the night before, I had tried to put a bunch of wool projects together and I kept saying, oh, I don't have this. I don't have this color. I don't have this color. So that way, when I went there, I realized these are the colors that I need. So greens, browns, and greens, browns, and tans are what I needed to get and I got them. But I had done a video that was called Just a Chat and it had that bird as the graphic picture. But I took the camera off of its moorings and I had my hand over the microphone. So it's a silent movie at that point. I showed the mess of my room and it was what creativity looks like. It was a mess and that's kind of what you have to do when you're auditioning. That's what I have to do. I put my wool all in piles because they're bits and pieces. It was a mess, but I realized it was marvelous, and I had it that way for about a week and a half. And then I thought, enough, I, I, I can't stand it anymore. So I put everything away, and that's where I thought I'm not gonna, I knew I didn't have time to do a wool video, so I didn't, I didn't keep those aside to show you all my wool. No, I put all my wool away, it's organized. So I will show some of the charm packs that I got. Those are cool in my next video, but they're in the box. While I was there though, it's very funny because I had this pattern um, and I was already looking at it to see which wool colors that I needed. I don't have a lot of blue. So um, I was already looking, but this is the Santa, the tree, the turkey, and me. I got this um, the end of last year, intending to make it. And I've talked about this on other videos, but it's embroidery and wool applique. Well, apparently uh, Primitive Gatherings is doing a stitch along because they had several of the blocks on the wall. Now they were doing, it was a fabric background. So it was a, it was a fabric. It was rig It wasn't hand dyed. It was just a fabric background. It was called time worn. So it was kind of like the, the shadows look gorgeous. Of course they were out and cause otherwise I would have bought it. These are the things that I had chosen. I had chosen to dyed Osnabergs. And so I may do that or I may use that linen that I just bought because the Osnaberg can stretch a little bit and without much applique, I mean without much applique and wool it might stretch. I'll figure out what I want to do but that's kind of cool that they were doing that stitch along and so that would be a great wool project to do um, and and that's cool. So I just, and the pattern, that whole pattern is only like $32. It's still available all over the place. I got it on Etsy when it first, it was like the week that it came out. Um, cause I follow Annie down. So I got it right away. Now the other thing, what else do I want to share? Um, the other thing that I want to share is I did a giveaway two videos ago and it was just with some stuff that my friend Kim had gifted me. And I, I had three grab bags that I gave away. Well, Diane was one of the recipients of that and she sent me a gift back in the mail. It was a perfect day. I didn't even get to thank her. I didn't even thank her until today because it's been a crazy week. But the day that it came in, it was one of those rough days when I was just, just like stretched. My brain was stretched. And when I, when I opened it up, I just, my husband was there and I said, oh, I am loved. I am loved. And I showed him what it was, but he was just looking at me and just so happy because he knows what these videos mean to me, even though sometimes when he's working nights, he leaves and I don't get to say goodbye to him. He knows I'm doing these videos, but, um, he knows what this community means to me. And so it was so awesome. Just, just getting that, um, is just, it was cause words of affirmation are my, my love language. And so that she thought of me stitch that for me because you see me like this is, this is me to you. But the way I get you back to me is through comments. And sometimes I fall, I, I've, I've been in the no, I was off of Instagram for two weeks. So, um, I, I, I given, I, I did my hide and stitch mode. So that's what I do when I do hide and stitch. Um, I don't do my videos. I don't go on Instagram. I kind of just like get through the day and stitch and wake up at two o'clock in the morning and do all that. But it was marvelous. Um, so this is what she sent me. Oh my goodness. And she told me the pattern it's in the card. So I'm going to tell you it's a pattern. So it's these beautiful pillow tucks. You can't see the color very well, but this is a beautiful mauve. So it's love. This is a beautiful green prey faith. Oh, that's where that thing is. And trust. So 
it is beautiful. And I'm going to share in a moment what those words mean to me in a minute. But she also sent me, this is a dishcloth, but it's, and she said it's for my little log cabin for Christmas time for the dishcloth. But, oh, it's gorgeous. My mom used to make things like this and I only had a couple of them and I love them. But when you use them as dishcloths, they get all dirty. So I may just save this and use this as a light pot holder because it's so beautiful and it has the hook. So thank you, Diane. That was so very thoughtful. Um, let me put my glasses on and tell you where that pattern is from. I think it's, it's from, um, I think you pronounce it elephants. Um, so it's a blog. It's Jennifer Reynolds and this is her blog. It's like elephants, but it's E L E F A N T Z. So I'll put that in the show notes, but that's where you can get that pattern. So Diane, thank you so much. That was so thoughtful. Um, now I think I've got everything that I'm going to share on that. So again, I will do another wool along friends and I'll do some giveaways there. Um, but again, I'm not sure where I'm going to do that snowman pattern, which giveaway, where I'm going to do that. Um, oh, catch my breath. Good. Okay. So now for the good stuff. So this is where I want to share what is like my faith journey with my God. And, um, I always want to share with you something special that I think might help you but also to give you a little bit, because I'm, I'm a very transparent person, for better or for worse, pretty transparent. So I kind of give you a window into what is going through. I'm sweating. This is what's going through in my life. I got my hair cut, and it's still long and sweaty. So oh, let's get that off me right now. Okay. Um, so transparent. And so just kind of weaving into this, I really... I'm really inspired by Kate at um, The Last Homely House. I've been talking about her videos. I've been watching her a lot um, because I'm, I just need that instead of watching all my friends and what they're stitching and, and all that, sometimes it, it, I'm really I'm a compulsive shopper. So when I watch Kate, she just chats a lot. And so I've been watching some floss tube. But I've also been watching a lot of Kate because I, I don't feel the compulsion to buy. I just have someone talking to me. And and that's been lovely. So um, where am I going now with this? Oh, about my chatty, the chatty part of me too. So um, yesterday I was driving home from work and I had been at a client's home. And just at the end there was something that was on TV just in the background. Luckily it was not in the room. And it was just a comedian not someone that I would choose to listen to. And um, he did just a little snippet that I heard. He was glorifying things that God says is not good and ridiculing things that God said is good. So I just thought, okay, I'm almost done. I'm on my way home. The people were pleasant. So I just have this thing right now. Anyway, so I was on my way home and I was at a stoplight and I was just thinking, Lord, um, not to, not anything judging that situation, but it was just like, it was like, Lord, this world is going crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on and you created us for your good pleasure. How must you feel if it bothers me? And this is what my husband and I were just talking about. If it bothers me, the little bit that I see, what is it for my God that sees and knows everything? And then I just had that thought of in the beginning he created and that each day, each time he created something, he said, and he saw that it is good. And I just had that thought going through my mind. It is good. And I thought, this is not good now. And a lot of times my life is not good and I can't control other situations. And so my thing, when I feel out of control, I think, okay, what can I control? And then I was just asking God, what do you see in me that's good? I want to bring pleasure to the God who created and sustains me and gives me hope. What does that look like? A lot of times it looks like this, Bonnie in her stitching room doing what she wants to do. And um, so I just had that thought. And then I just was asking God, show me, please show me, Lord. That's my thing. I just say, God, please show me, help me out in this. And so that was my thought last night. Then my sister-in-law came over and my nephew and we were playing. And then I got up this morning and after they left this morning, um, I was watering the garden and I thought, I'm just going to go, I need to weed the certain section of the garden. And I was getting changed. I was getting ready to go do it. And then 
I just had a thought, but again, I had asked God to show me something. He answered me and I just had the thought, what would please, because I was, I was just thinking again as I was watering, what would please my God in my life? And I thought a relationship, sitting down and spending time with him, which I have not been good at. And I thought, alrighty. So I got my Bible, I sat down. And that's a big thing. Sometimes I get so antsy that I stand up and read the Bible and then I'm thinking what I need to do. So I thought, okay, sit down. And I sat down and I, I was just gonna open it and read it and I thought, eh, let's do something better. I had started Bible study and stopped and I still had that book. So I, I just got up and I grabbed that book and I just opened it up and I thought, I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna start this. And it was amazing. It was about Cain and Abel in Genesis 4. And I thought, oh Lord, this is amazing. So I thought, okay, I'm starting. I So I read Genesis 1 through 4. And I just thought, okay, God, you're speaking to me. You are answering this crazy woman because I asked you a question and I said, show me. He is faithful. But I had to get into the part two where I was in his word. And so he was just speaking to me in it, but I was reading it and just loving just that creation, especially since I had been in the garden. Um, I, I just love the creation. I was going to say story. It is not a fake story. It is a creation documentary. And our kids, when we did homeschool, we found um, Answers in Genesis. And go on Answers in Genesis website. They have so many resources, amazing amount of resources. So we learned a lot about creation science. But as I was reading it, it was just, um, it was just speaking to my heart and he was answering questions that I had about my heart and my busyness and my fears and, and his heart. It was beautiful. I, that's, that's the magic. I stopped, I sat, I read, I opened up my heart to him and I didn't have all these thoughts about what I was going to do. It was just like, okay, I'm not going to garden this morning. I'm just going to do this. And then I started reading through and doing the study about Cain and Abel. And why did Cain, why, why was God displeased with Cain and pleased with Abel? And just that whole a bit about it. And just the verses that I looked up. And it, so basically what those verses were, they were pointing also to 1 Samuel. Um, about when Saul, when Samuel talked to Saul and said, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, and so that, that's the thing, okay, because I'm asking God, how can I please you? Obedience over sacrifice. I have his word. I know what he wants me to do. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. So obedience. And then there was another verse in Hosea. And it was, it was talking about knowing God. And, and the next one was about walking with God. But knowing God. So I and I, my notes, I wrote relationship with God, talk to him, <laughs> read his letter. That was for me. And then in Micah, a verse that I had shared before from you. So if I'm just going off of memory, it is, what does God require of man? I have shown you, God says, what is good. Do so for you to do good, to love, to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So that was what I was thinking too to do what God said is good, not what the world tells me is good, to do what God says is good and to abstain what God says not to do. Doesn't matter if the world tells me to do it. I got my marching orders from the Lord. Those are mine. And um, to walk humbly with my God. And that, so he was answering me, but it was totally amazing. This is the study and there, there are videos. So this was the study that Calvary Chapel was doing, I think last week, last week, last year. And I was way too busy to even, I let myself get too busy. I didn't even follow online. So there's free videos that she has available, but it's, it is any study that is focused on this, not interpretation, but focused on the word, you're going to be doing great or just crack open that Bible and read it. But that's me. That's, that's what this journey is, is just asking God questions, listening, and he will, he will, this is what our pastors, um, when you have a pastor teaching you from the word, what they will tell you is God gives you answers in his word, in his word. Um, so, so that's, that was 
my journey this morning. And, um, and it was just so neat that God cares so much about me that he answers my questions. And I was talking with my sister-in-law last night. She's deep like I am. <laughs> she likes to go deep in emotions talking about stuff like I am. I've known her since I was a kid. She's known me since she, she's younger. She's shown me since she was, um, before she was a teenager. So we've known each other a long time. And we've known what we've both walked through in our lives. And she was just saying that in all her trials, she is trusting God to sustain her. And I was saying, yeah, didn't life turn out different than we thought it was <laughs> back then? And she's like, yeah. Um, but in it, we just walk with our Lord and we ask him to show us what to do. And he is faithful. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. So um, may God bless you. May you choose joy nevertheless, and may you walk humbly with your God. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.